now got my email out got my instagram video out gonna give a little backstory and test everything to make sure everything's good right now i already got a couple submissions but i want to test to make sure the audio is working Gotta get my my chat up on the phone so I can read it, man. What am I doing? Got it ready. Read this, make sure it's good. Dope, dope, dope. So I got some beats already that people have sent. If you haven't sent your beat, send me your beat to my email, Excalibur Zero at gmail.com. Or you can just reply to the email if you're coming from the email just reply to it and then just send me the beat i'll be checking my other email as well so if you have any of your beats that you want me to review i'm going to be basically going over them and listening to them and trying to give as much advice as i can um hopefully don't you know don't take it personal it's just going to be real advice about what i think would work or would not work with that track and how you could either format it or get it so where it's kind of more leaning towards you know possible placements so hopefully you get enough advice from this to give a little bit background about myself while we wait for people to get in here um basically i graduated from full sail university full sail university back in 2014 and after i graduated i went into the career development program and basically landed um an opportunity to intern for a music library and what a music library is i'm sure you heard it already but uh, they basically send out music to production companies and networks to get their you know catalog placed for music. And so working with this library, I learned a lot, man. Like I had a lot of different experiences and opportunities to kind of see the intel. But when I went in to this job, I always, I still had that urge to, you know, make beats for artists and stuff. So like I was always involved with the community. I was always kind of just keeping my eye on the community. Cause that's where, that's, you know, this is where I like, helping the most of being a part of the most like the internet community as far as the producer community so i definitely want to give as much insight as i possibly can like i learned a lot not just like how to get into a library or anything like that but just even the process of what it takes to maintain a music library and work with these networks like i sat in editor bays and if you don't know what an editor bay is is basically in production companies the people who are making the shows they have like these offices and some of them are all over LA and New York and stuff like that and all parts of the country. But in these offices, it's dope because like sometimes like I, I, let me just give you an example. I would walk up to a production company and like they would have like a dope window looking out into Hollywood. Like the whole office looks like you can see it outside and they have, would have like a little logo in the front and like a, a front office desk or like a, a secretary helping you out. And you, they would walk you to these different rooms and there'd be people with meetings and you'll see like different storyboards of the actual TV shows being made, which is dope. They'll have like screenshots and they're kind of for, like formatting how they want the show to play out. So when they put it on Netflix or wherever, it has like a really good captivating storyline. They really put a lot of different pieces to put the story together. A lot of like dope graphic artists, everybody. But in there, there's editing bays. And basically what an editing bay is, it's like a little studio. And it's a studio for editors, people who are like cutting up the show and putting the video footage together and adding the music and the sound effects and adding in the graphics that are being made and stuff. They have like a little studio with their speakers and it's dope, man, because you really see the process. And they have like clips that they're testing out that they're cutting up and they're sending out to the networks to get approved to say, hey, this, this will work for TV. So it's dope because when you're doing that, like you get to see the process of them cutting up the music, how they're using the music, what works about the music and what doesn't work about the music. And I think that's where I can really help is that experience right there, helping people really get their music formatted for television. Because uh, my goal this year really legit is just to help 100 producers get placed. Like I just want 100 pro different producers to get at least one placement, whether if it's like an ad placement, a social media placement um a tv placement so what i'm trying to do is just build a community i've been going on forums going on facebook groups really trying to involve myself as much in the community i have my discord up um which i'm adding in libraries now i'm adding in different libraries that i find i'm going to keep creating basically a free directory um, of different libraries that i find that you can submit to and stuff like that so join me along this journey i appreciate the people who are in here already i appreciate the people who's been buying the course I appreciate the people who's been rocking with me so far um, it really means a lot. So let's get into it. And yeah, man, let's let's change this year, man. Like TV placements is super slept on, bro. Like I sell beats online and it's great, but TV placements are another level. I get four royalty checks every year and 
it, it, it helps a lot, man. I got one. I got one that's supposed to go out tomorrow that came early today. And, you know, I think that producers can use this lane, making music for television, but also use the lane of selling beats online and even taking artists and converting them into this lane. Like it's a, it's a, it's a huge opportunity and it's not that many, there's not that much competition. And there, I mean, like there is competition, don't get me wrong, but there's not that much like super competitive competition. <laughs> What's up, Jason with the <laughs> weirdo. But we got some beats in here. Um, this one's by Mason. Mason, if you're in here, what's up, bro? Uh, Mason bought the course, and we, I've been working with him. We've been on Discord, on Instagram, just talking. I've been sending him out different libraries and stuff, and um, this is a, a track that he sent me before, but we're going to play here on live stream. What's up, Danny? Let me know if this audio works. If it doesn't, just send me a message. Oh, yeah, this track is actually the track. These are the stems that are included in the course. So this, in the course... These are the MIDI files that are included. He added it on a different, um, with different sounds. What's up, Yuri? No problem, but I can play your beat real quick before you get, uh, before you head off or, yeah, I'll have it playing here. All right, dope. All right, since this this is the already this is already the track that I sent, um, that's on the TV course placements, the TV placement course that's listed on here, like on the left or whatever. But these are the the MIDI files with it, and I like the sounds that you use, but I would go with a little bit of higher quality with that plug sound, and the bell sound. The bell sound sounds a little outdated, so I would switch it. If you heard like the the sounds that were used in it on the actual course for the MIDI. I, I can't remember exactly what sound I used for the bell one, but it was probably Omnisphere. If not, I definitely recommend looking at some one shots. Try to get some really high quality one shots. Um, and I can send you some, I'll send you some uh, that I have already and replace it with these sounds. But you know, the format, everything is there. This is like a dramedy style beat. Dramedy gets used a lot in television. Dramedy is like comedy tracks, but dramedy has like a little bit more awkwardness to it. Which gives the like a slight tenseness to the scene. It's not too tense, not too dramatic, but it adds like a little, um, like an awkwardness, a quirkiness to the track. So yeah, definitely replace the bell. But everything else, I mean, is fine, man. Uh, I would turn up the track for the drums too to hit a little bit harder. Yeah, this would definitely I mean this would definitely get used, bro. Like that's. A lot of TV, if you listen to it, is these types, this type of music, and comedy underscore all that type of music, dramedy, uh, they get placed a lot. All right, we're gonna go up with Nur, uh, my boy Yuri. Since he's about to leave, we'll play his track. That sound, that lead, that that whistle, I would probably take out one because it's clashing a lot with the track, and it's really distracting. Those types of sounds are the sounds that really um, that that really distract and kind of interrupt the scene as far as like being distraction. I don't know if you guys ever notice, but sometimes I don't know if you guys notice, but like I'll watch a TV show with my girl sometimes or something. We'll just be watching the TV show, and there will be a track playing, and it just sounds so off. It would just be completely off. And it, it just is noticeable and it kind of like just interrupts your attention for a second. I don't know if that ever happens to you guys, but me and my girl do it all the time. And you want to avoid sounds that create that that inter that pattern interrupt like for the television show. They want the, the user engaged with the show. So they're not going to be more lenient towards sounds that are like that. But if you do include a track like that, make sure you include a stem that has no lead. Also, I would bring out the drums a little bit more. That way it's driving the track more. And let me go back to the piano. I think that was. EQ out some of the low end on the piano. So for the piano, I would probably take out like 80 hertz. Just roll off some some of the 80 hertz 
and then that way it won't clash with the 808 a little bit it'll give it a little bit more room um, you can even go up probably to like 100 to 120 hertz just so you won't clash with that low synth that you have that's like that don't don't also i would cut back on the chance the the that you have in the background i don't know that yeah, cut out on the chance, but the the bell, that mallet is like the perfect type of mallet that would be used for television. Like that's those types of sounds get used a lot. It's like the plucky sound, the mallet that you have right here. That one. But the the transition into the format so far is perfect. You got the the call to act like the call and answer type of feel. Bring those hi hats up. That way the track's driving a little bit more. Perfect transition. That's exactly the type of transition. This whistle would, I would cut out and I would keep it very minimal for this part. Since this is your B section, this is going to be your B section. This is going to be where the majority of the dialogue is going to be. So majority of the talking is going to be in this section here. So you want to keep it minimal, but still driving. So uh, keep your low, like your low bass that you have, um, and even maybe the mallet and your drums. Everything else I would take out, kind of strip down, and then from there, um, bring little elements back in, back into that first section you have. Perfect, yeah, this is perfect right here, exactly. What's up, Mason? I just played your track. Dope, man. I would add a sting that has like the piano hit, the boom, like the low hit with maybe the 808 or whatever, uh, just at the end for that sting and replace it with the sound effects or layer it on top of that sound effect right there. But the B section right here around 45 seconds, that's perfect. The way that you had just the 808, that's exactly how you need to do it. Um, you know, that that's the, the perfect amount of room for a dialogue to fit in. And yeah, I'll take out probably the whistle with everything else, man. Uh, just bring up and I, I like I like where the track's going so far that definitely could be beefed up into a track that I think that would be used for underscore because it doesn't have too much of a uh, emotion maybe a slight drama to it but that's like the perfect like underscore comedic dramedy type of feel so dope job bro shout out to everybody who's joining the stream I appreciate everybody who's in here uh, Mason, I played your track already. Basically what I said, since it was the stems, I would bring, replace some of the sounds that you use with bells. Um, and I, like I said, I can send you some one shot kits that have like really good bells in it from Omnisphere and stuff like that, that uh, I, I've just collected over that I'm, I'm, I'm free to send. If you guys want that, I'll probably just drop it on the discord or something. Um, yeah, but I would just replace some of the bell sounds with um, higher quality bells. What's up, Adelante? Overall, it's good, bro. Like, this is the, the mini files and stuff from the course. So this is, I mean, stuff like this gets used all the time, bro. So this definitely would get used. Uh, just that bell, that doom, 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 doom. I would change it to a sound that's a little bit more plucky as, as, as opposed to, like, whistly. Yeah, bro, definitely just bring out like a higher quality, um, a higher quality bell sound for that one. Everything else is there. The drums, I like the sound selection for the drums, very clean drums that you got going on there. Uh, like the bass sound, the bass sound, you can use that all day. I would replicate this template that you created for that track too, and make more tracks with those same sounds. Just make, you know, new drum patterns and new melodies or whatever. But yeah, bro, that's, that will get used for sure. All right, we're going to play Jalen's next. So Apple Music, oh yeah, Studio 84. 
yeah, we, we were we were in a group called Studio 84. It was like building like this little like business together. It was dope. But the person who started it, InFly Music, shout out InFly Music, got tied up with other stuff. So we kind of had to put it on pause. But let's play his track here. Know them other niggas had a pass on that Coming with a lie, let me catch all okay. that You can throw it this way, let me bet hey. on that Speaking for a while, it's time to act on that I Had a pass on that But when I roll up, no, that's all black On the east side, finna slide to the crib Then you hop in, baby, you know what it is Baby, you know I'm the deal So you steady capping for what? See all your feelings just bubbling up to the ceiling And you trying to mask them for what? But I know that you were strangers to the real And girl, I know you caught up in your prior deal yeah. yeah, I like this. This is dope. I like if you're sending this for TV, that would get used. I would put a little bit more tune, I guess, on the vocals. Maybe like some pitching or whatever, like the pitch software, uh, like Melodyne or something, to get it a little bit cleaner. But you don't need to go crazy on it. And um, the cuss words, cuss words they don't really like on TV. You can use words like damn, but uh, what's it, the FCC or whatever? Um, I just got reminded of Eminem's lyrics right there when I said that, but, uh, yeah, the FCC, like, they don't like, you know, they won't let you guys, let people use cuss words for TV shows unless it's on, like, Netflix and stuff, but this would definitely get used. Like, what I see for this is, like, a scene that's going into a scene opener, or, like, basically, like, they're on, like, let's say, like, Love and Hip Hop, they're showing a city of, like, New York or something, and they're transitioning, it's nighttime, and, you know, they're showing the landscaping and the and the people walk around Times Square or whatever, or, you know, just they're creating a scene. And this would be the perfect type of track to introduce a scene that's like more romantic or more like intimate. You know, with a, a person's out there taking a shorty on a date and he's listening to this right before he's bumping up, he's coming up, he's pulling up, he's listening to this and he's like, closes the door, he's feeling confident, he's coming out there, he's walking into the to the, the store or the, the restaurant. And he's feeling smooth. He got a turtleneck on. It's tan. It's like a light brown turtleneck. And he's feeling real suave. And he's like, hey, girl, what up? And that's the song that, you know, gets introduced into that scene. That's the type of track that I would hear. Um, but, yeah, it's a dope track, man. Like, that definitely would get used for sure if you take out the cuss words especially. What's good, STK? Appreciate you coming through, bro. Next up, we got Nerdy. Oh, she... She said she don't want to... Oh, okay. I'm going to play it anyway, just because you sent it. But don't feel ashamed out here, man. Like, all right. So, this is like a drama track. This is for sure you use. I don't know if you're watching because I just saw your email, but this is dope. What I would do, kind of similar to Yuri's, is take out the whistle, uh, bring up that stab that you have the doom, doom, doom. That has this is like a perfect drama track. The transitions, the snare rolls, everything into it, perfect. This would even this track alone would get used, but to take it to the next level to get maximum placements to really get used, what I would do to this track is bring out those horns. Make those stabs hit really hard because you want that drama, like intense feel. It feels like something's going on with this track, like some type of um, argument or something. Something big is gonna happen. You look, you look at Flavor of Love, and when the girls are going back and forth and arguing, if you think about like that's like the pioneer for like reality television. This track would be perfect for that type of scene. So I would bring up the horns, have the 808 come up a little bit. Uh, the way you have the transition rolls are perfect. I love the sound selection that you have. I would just take out that whistle or maybe replace it or bring it down in the mix just so it's not as prominent and distracting, but everything else in this track is fire. I like the rim shots. That stab is really fire. I'll just bring it out even more or layer with the horn. Perfect. 
perfect B section here. Exactly. Mixed by Mason said, about to throw them hands type music. Yeah, definitely. This is dope. Hey. Hey. Yeah, this is perfect. This is perfect. The way you added the, the stabs in the background, the like the pluck. Yeah, perfect. For TV, for TV. Perfect. I mean, I, I even like that outro. That's a different type of outro. Like usually it would end right when the beat like goes to the second time around on the on the hook part. But the way that you added like the minimalness to that, that part right into the sting, that's perfect. I think that's dope. That would definitely get used. They would use something like that for sure. Um, really dope track. I don't know if you're in here, but really dope track. Appreciate you showing the support, SDK. Definitely got to get you in next time, man. I've been listening to some of the lo-fi you've been posting. It's dope, bro. Next up is Low Tax Excalibur. Go by Low Tax. I appreciate you, bro. Okay, there's stems in here too. Let's hear. Let's hear it. Perfect piece like him. You can even take out the hi hats right here to keep it a little bit more minimal, but still, the amount of space is perfect. Cool. <laughs> this is fire. This is fire. So, what I would do to this track, this, the synth. That you use this for this is perfect but i would even layer it with like a, a string um from like nexus has some really good strings that would fit for this and the hollywood strings two sample pack that they have i think it's pretty cheap now because it's pretty it's a pretty old pack but they have really nice strings that work perfect for this i would just layer that scent on top of the strings to bring out a little bit more energy for the track but the drums that you have the snare transitions that you have 808 all that stuff is clean the bell that you have even is perfect um, I like the sound selection that you use for that. I would just layer it with one more thing just to bring out a little bit more quality in that synth because that synth doesn't have the highest quality. It just has like a really good sound to it. So what you got right there is uh, a dope track, bro. Mason said that he could hear this in a sports commercial. Exactly. I, I could hear that in a sports commercial. This is like a drama type of track as well. Um, this would definitely get used, I think, in television, even as is right now. But like I said, I want to give as much po um, feedback as possible to bring it up to that next level. Uh, I definitely would recommend layering it. One person that I really learned from when I was working for Signature Tracks, um, there was a producer on there. His name is Mark Cragen. He made a lot of tracks for like Chris Brown. He made Chris Brown's Loyal. He co-produced that track. He co-produced AO. He co-produced um, a few tracks for uh, with, um, what's his name? Nick Knack Beats from the Bay Area. They did stuff for like Pia Mia, Akon, um, I think I think it was Akon. I know Sean Kingston. And he was just a really dope, talented producer. And he still creates for them. And one of the things that really stuck out to me is he switched over from like making music for mainstream hip like mainstream the industry and stuff like that to making music for like underscore for television. And his quality, like he's always searching for that sound that layers perfect with the sounds that he already has. His quality is crazy high. Like he has this really nice polished sound. And I would always think like, how can I get my sound to sound like him as far as the quality? Like what can I do to keep that layer uh, or to layer my tracks to make it sound more high quality? And I would pick his brain and stuff. And he always like had like a really high quality sound, like a, a, a string or something that would be layered with a sound like this. So that's why I, I'm kind of, 
giving that advice. Like everything else about this track is fire. I would cut it down maybe because it's like at three minutes. You don't need tracks longer than two minutes for television. Um, but the, everything else is dope. I want to keep playing it. Appreciate you, Danny. Just imagine there's things on this. It's fire, though. I'm going to go back to the section right here. Even right here, you can add something else to make it so it's like the A section here. play another track that was a dope one that definitely would get used uh like mason said that definitely has like the sports commercial type of feel um even like the sports highlights you got to think of like there's so many different contexts of tv right and your job is just to format it in a way where it can fit on all different types as much types like as many different types of television as possible if that makes sense because your one track doesn't just have to get used for one show your one track if it's in a library can you get used for all types of shows on all types of networks all types of shows and networks pay differently so definitely keep that in mind the sound you used I, I would just layer this with like with a simple brass hit like boom boom like just something on the bottom the bottom end that kind of just adds more um dynamic and impact to it but everything else is dope man i like this one too but this is a five minute track bro this is a whole podcast right here this track is way too long nah just cut it down to like a minute and a half or two minutes and have your sting hit like right around here um everything else is dope I like the sound you use the beats hitting it's dope um, before I start this one, Mason said, how often do companies are choosing and looking for songs in libraries? Um, I mean, so this is kind of the process. So before a show, like when a show is getting kind of made, they're already having different groups of that production company working and doing different things. So there's people out in the field shooting the show. There's people who work as music supervisors who are trying to like create music that will fit in the show. If like they go to the club or something, that's called, um, they need like cleared music. They need basically clear music that they can play. So if the scene is being shot and there's music in the background, it feels like that music is cleared. Um, so they have different people always searching for music on all different processes of the show. So that's like the beginning stage of the show. And then after the show is shot and they're putting the show together, they're adding in the track. So they're always looking for different types of um, music. And I mean, shows are always looking. There's tons and tons and tons of different shows and they all need music. And on a cue sheet, a cue sheet like is basically the sheet that shows all the music that's placed on each episode. There's, I mean, if there's like an hour long show, 45 minutes to an hour long show, you'll see like 100 to 150 different tracks used on that show. So they have a lot of music to fill and they don't want every show to have the same music. They want to kind of spice it up. There's some tracks they like more than others and they'll use sporadically out throughout the whole season, but they're always looking for a new show. So if you think about eight episodes, they're using 100 to 150. That's like 800 to over a thousand different tracks just for that show alone on a minimal. Um, and there, you know, there could be way more than that, but there's always, always, always companies out there looking for shows uh, or for music, and they, you know, they're going to libraries. Some of them, some of them will license out music to like, you know, industry, like the industry artists. They'll work directly with the labels, like Universal or 
you know, Def Jam or whatever and try to work out a deal to use certain songs that they really like the song and they think they'll fit for a scene, like a major song. But, I mean, there's always, 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 like, libraries out there that are getting hit up. Um, yeah, there's a lot of music that's used per episode. And, and like like I said, there's, like, 100 to 150 for, like, an hour-long track or hour-long show. But they'll cut it up so some tracks will be used for, like, five or six minutes. Those are usually, like, the scene openers. Uh, which I talk about in the course, as you know, and then the ones that get used a little bit longer, like the drama ones, the tension ones, like the, the trap tracks, the ones that are drama, those those will get used a little bit longer, maybe like 30 seconds up to a minute. And then the ones that are underscore get used very long as well. Those are usually like a minute as well, um, but it, it varies. But yeah, let's play this next track. <laughs> create a version with no 808 because the 808 could be distracted but the 808 is fire you're going to create like really good with the 808 i like the 808 the guitar's dope this would probably be used like as a scene closer or a scene opener and yeah those are like it's just like a it has like almost like a pop feel to it but pop trap um feel to it those are the type of tracks that get used for like scene openers and stuff but yeah this is a dope track as well i'm gonna go ahead and Go back to your tracks and see if there's any more new emails here. I already played Yuri, so I'm gonna play Vani here. Let's listen to it. Black Ink Crew, dope show. I have a couple placements on this show, actually. It's a dope show. So this section that's coming up, this is going to be like a really good A section right here to end out the track. I would first start off by maybe changing the sound selection. The pluck that you're using for this is like a bassy, a bassy pluck. And for those, you, you got to be very tasteful with it. Like the, the, like the, the, the sense that you use for this need to be very kind of up to date doesn't mean need to be crazy up to date but just very kind of current with the type of sounds that you're hearing in tele or um like the radio or in mainstream music so i would change that pluck i would use like nexus if you have it that has some good plucks in there silith has some good plucks spire has some good plucks serum has some good plucks that you could find on there um with like free packs that you can get with it or um uh and ascent uh, some of those you can literally license out for like nine dollars a month from like Sear or from Spice or whatever. You can literally like pretty much rent to own or whatever uh, the track or the the VST. But I would definitely improve the quality as far as the synth and then the drums. I'm not mad at the drums. I do like the transitions that you have with the the. DJ scratch effects, but I would be tasteful with it as well and only bring them in when you're about to transition back into this A section and right in the beginning when you're introducing the track. Like, doom, 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 and then the B drops into this. But the, the melody and the format as far as the drums and the way you have the track is perfect. I like the, the drums. I would maybe add like a snare or some hi-hats a little bit or something that just gives it a little bit more... Uh, drive at the end um you could probably get a little bit more 
uh, I don't know, like beefier kick, but I think the kick is fine as far as the quality of it. This set, like the melody, everything's perfect. Like this, this is the type of track that would get used. But when you go into this B section, I would take out this do 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 that main melody. I would switch it, bring it back, and keep just like the hits with the um, like the hit effects. <laughs> This is where I would definitely take out the, the main lead melody, but these are the type of tracks we get used. If this, this would definitely get used. Like these are the type of tracks that definitely get used in television, but to keep it going, like to keep the longevity of the track, to keep it getting used like at a longer span, I would add, uh, you could even go back to this track, use this track again if it did get placed and just beef up the sounds, literally just replace the sounds with beefier drums or something or uh better plucks from the vscs that i mentioned but yeah this is dope like this would definitely be used. maybe switch out that whistle dope sting that sting's dope i would add the hit with it just a mm, that gives the edit like editors really like sting sometimes your track will literally get used because a sting on a track will be so bad they'll cut your sting off and put it on that track like at the end of that track and you'll get like a two second placement just because they didn't like that sting. They will cut out stings from different tracks just to end that scene the way they want it. So don't be, uh, I mean, you'll know, put emphasis on your stings. Make sure they're like, you're putting something dope. Like it doesn't need to be, need to be crazy. Don't overthink what I just said, but like adding that, boom, that hit on top of this would be dope. Yeah. But dope track. Yeah. That, I mean, that those type of tracks definitely get used for sure. I like to say Omnisphere has good sounds for uh, underscore two. Yeah, Omnisphere does, but they have like good bells. I use Omnisphere more for their bells. I like their guitar strings too. I use it like for like more plucky stuff, like mm, 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 like just very like two thousands um, like Timbaland or like early two thousands R and B like type of sound selection, but under like more current drums. So I, I do like Omnisphere for like bells. It's really good for like tension and drama. Really good for that. Um, they have really good ARPs, like the layers, the BPM, ARPs and BPMs. If you go under there and use some of like their bell acoustic ARPs or whatever, um, as far as like the type of sound or whatever it is, those type of sounds really get used a lot in television. I really like those sounds. Yeah, I'm just first dope for TV. Appreciate you sending the track over, Vani. That's dope. Hope that helped. Let's get through some more here. I think Yuri sent another track. Let me know if you guys can be turned this up. That main set, that. Woo, woo. That Hoover or Hover, like those Hover sounds. I don't know what they're called. I always see those scents like the ones that you hear and um, that birthday song with Rihanna. With Rihanna, I can't remember what it's called. Oh, cake. Yeah, cake. That type of sounds like a Hoover sound. I would not use that for TV. If you do, I would use it the way you did use it, but it's not a key. What's up, RMC Beats? The man himself. This section is perfect for the way that you space it out. And maybe like a clap or something. perfect but the hoover sound like the scent is out of key let me see if you're bringing this a section in right here i would add hot faster hi-hats here so it's like something just bring up the rhythm of this part to bring up the pacing and maybe change that main sense the main that do 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 i would change that with the let's see what would sound good with that you could put a bell for sure, a different bell, like a pluckier bell. And maybe a pizzicato would sound dope with that. Uh, I, I said this in the course, but Nexus 2, and I put this actually in the two, on, I think my Instagram video, Nexus 2 has like the best pizzicato tracks. There is There are some 
tra um, contact libraries that have good pizzicato, but it's like more of like a really high end, like orchestral type of feel. These Nexus ones tend to be used a lot, a lot, a lot. Like especially if you have like the regular Nexus with the 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 preset called Pizzy Bell or Pit Piz Bell or something like that. That track is or that sound is used so much on television. Um, those sounds are really good for TV. The Hollywood 2's expansion pack is what I use, and it's a Nexus. Really dope sounds for like the reality TV type of styles. So let's see if we have more submissions. That's pretty much. Oh, okay, we got some more right here. Next up, we got Perry. So the main electric guitar, the doo -doo 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 I would either switch it out with a different guitar just because it's like it has a lot of um like the high end sound that just kind of competes or it's distracting. But this like this isn't really gonna be used too much for dialogue. This type of track would be used for like a scene closer or a scene opener. Um, you know, you're driving down, you the 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 frat just got out of school, they just finished their exam, they're riding down Pacific Coast Highway, woo, we're gonna celebrate spring break, and they're, you know, they're going to Malibu or wherever, and this is the type of track they're listening to, and just causing havoc, but I would switch out that guitar, and but the way that it transitions into like the do 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 with the 808, perfect, dope, I would clean up the 808 by taking out some of the low ends in, in the guitars, that way that 808 has a little bit more room to breathe. My boy John the Dreamer in here, oh snap, the legend, yo John, yo John's a real one bro, shout out John. That, this that lead the da, 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 that's the only thing not doing it for me everything else i think this track would get used like this is a good track they this is like has like that poppy style you know that that young um like teenage angst almost like type of style <laughs> what's up damaris I would bring out the drums a little bit so it's more front more in front with the mix the 808 you're fine the level either cut out some of the lows and then with that guitar just switch it out like that that lead guitar switch it with another lead guitar sound or bring it more down in the mix and clean up clean like cut out some of the harshness in it in the high end but that's dope yo john said rmc on your dad <laughs> all right I think that's, we got more submissions. I think it's the same. Oh, he has different tracks here. Dope. Listen to, listen to these ones. This will get used. Bring out the drums or turn down the guitar. I 
would bring out the drums. Um, there, Slate Digital has this uh, virtual mix. This is called it's called virtual mix rack. It's really dope. What I like to do is use the drum preset on it. I'm not, I don't think I'll be able to play it here because there's no there's no. Um, I don't think I have my sound set up for live stream, but I'll, I'll try to open up FL Studio and show you what it looks like. This drum rack is really good for bringing out your drums and making them a little bit more prominent, especially for rock drums like that. This virtual mix rack right here, I like to put on and then add like a um, the preset and just mess around with some of the, the compressors that are with it to make it so like, I'll, just, I'll turn down the attack a little bit if I have like a really hard hitting kick, that way the kick's able to, to or a slow attack, I'll put a slow attack to it, that way the kick's able to go through without getting hit by the compressor. But uh, I would just bring out the drums by either turning down your guitars or adding this mix rack. So this is a dope mix rack by Slate Digital. I just, uh, every I have like a yearly subscription to them. You can get all their plugins for like $150. That includes um, Innocence. It's like 150 for the year. So it's it's really dope. So I use like just like there's some of these drum ones here. If I have like a good snare or I like to use, uh, which one do I use the most? I like the floor tom one. It just has like a, a really big impact of, full like type of sound i'll use this a lot but these are these are some good sounds to kind of like, like bring out the drums and give it like that kind of like the 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 hardware feel you know what i'm saying but it's still synthetic it's still digital so that's a really good one let's listen to the emo girl one also i would cut your intro down a little bit your intro needs to be cut probably in half and then the tracks like i said these are probably just tracks you made on the regular i can see that you you have it like set up for like BSARs or to sell or whatever, but to make the tracks smaller. You can use these tracks for television, man. These tracks will definitely get used. Like this is the type of, the type of style they like. Switch out that that drum, that high guitar with like a different guitar, um, same thing, or just something less harsh for TV placements. Like I said, these are usually for scene openers. Yeah, it's 150 a year, MC. That's not bad at all, bro. It comes with all their VSTs. Like I got so many VSTs with them. Um, yeah, but this is dope, man. I, I would fix the mix like that bell that's in there. It's really hidden under the mix. Bring the guitars down, bring the drums up um, and clean out some of the muddiness by taking uh, parametric EQ and just cutting out some of the low end. Most parametric EQs, man, like they come already with these presets of low end roll, like the low end roll offs. You can see like if you switch over, I would just cut out like I would have to mix a track, but like around 125 on your guitars, that way your 808 is still hitting through. You give, you're you saving all this space right here for your 808 to hit through, which is the majority of the energy from your 808 is coming right here. Anywhere from like 150 to like 80. Like anything below 40, they say we really can't hear as humans the older we get, especially. Um, so it's really muddy down here. So I would just cut out a lot of that for the guitar. Yeah, man, use that or even use the multiband compressor in FL Studio if you have FL Studio. Like, you don't have to necessarily buy those. I would just either bring down, like I said, the, the main instruments and then just bring up the, tr the the drums. That way it has a little bit more um, emphasis on the drums. But the melody you got, like the way the track is set up as far as like the, the melodies and how much you have layered on the main hook sections is dope. But yeah, man, dope beats, man. I appreciate you sending those through. Appreciate you coming through the stream too, man. Feel free to send any more tracks. Let's see if we got any new ones here. Um, I'll search my email, but I think that might be it. Yeah, that might be it. All right, guys. I appreciate everybody who's came through the stream. 
we're at about an hour here so i'm gonna call it that feel free to come through next time i'm trying to do a lot of different things like some of the things that i have planned is like i want to go through these live streams and you guys submit in your beats um even you like especially i want to start with you probably mason first like where you sit in your track and i'll kind of mess with it and polish it and then send it back to you i'll fix it on stream and then off stream i'll probably just export it all send it back to you with stems and everything and you just take that track and you have it so you can submit but i want to kind of just fix uh subscribers or whatever beats and help them kind of format it more and kind of use my process of how i would format that beat and make it for television so if that's something you guys are interested in please be tuned um join the discord if you haven't already it should be in the description below if it's not let me know just send me a dm or an email or whatever i uh, appreciate everybody's been coming through um yeah i got the new course that's out you got most of you guys here i've seen you know already got it but if you haven't got it you know check it out i think that it's really going to help you understand exactly how to format your beats what type of tracks are getting used for reality television all that other stuff i'm thinking about doing a lot of more dope stuff on stuff on here i'm probably going to take maybe my royalty statement and then cut like a small piece of it and just kind of show uh how the royalty statements look and stuff like that that way you can get an idea and and, and kind of describe each individual part of the royalty statement so if that's something you're interested in let me know shout out everybody who came through y'all the real ones thanks everybody